It's a lazy Sunday afternoon. You're bored out of your mind, and there's just nothing good on the TV. Also, you no longer have a physical body, so you can't even placate your boredom by having a snack or uh, self-entertaining yourself in some way. All that's left to do is sit in your eternal limbo, completely devoid of stimuli, and just await your inevitable psychotic break that will just consume all the remains of your existence for the rest of eternity. Brilliant. This Kafkaesque nightmare is apparently the next highly anticipated step in human evolution. Whee! But don't worry. Several steps later, that technology is going to improve, and your mind is going to have a whole glorious virtual world with which you can interact and do all sorts of cool stuff. Or maybe you can even have your mind implanted to some sort of sick robot and go around doing all sorts of Robocop shit. The possibilities for such a technology are absolutely endless, assuming, of course, the technology is even possible in the first place. This theoretical technology is the basis of countless movies, television shows, novels, video games, and, of course, the recent Amazon Prime show uploads, which I was watching a lot of, and it's why I wanted to make this video, because I'm like, that looks awesome. How long? Soon, I hope. It's not the void thing. I don't want the void thing. Please, not the void thing. <laughs> Some black mirror shit. For as long as people have existed, they have dreamed of immortality. While biological immortality has eluded humankind, technological immortality does seem well within the foreseeable future. Possibly, possibly, come on, even within our lifetimes. There are still those alive who were born before computers were invented, but computer capabilities have increased to the point where nearly every single person has a tiny little supercomputer in their pocket all the time. So that's your mobile phone. Everybody knew that. While medical science does have limits, Computer science is often seen as sort of magical and limitless, given the incredible rate at which new improvements are made. Now, with so much popular media, hello, Upload, and terrifyingly, hello, Black Mirror, I don't want the void and Christmas songs playing over and over again. Does anyone get that Black Mirror scares the shit out of me? Anyway, with all that popular media, and even many scientists incredibly optimistic about the possibility of uploading our minds to a digital realm, just how close are we to this technology. The brain. For as much as we know about it, the brain is really the most poorly understood organ in the body. What exactly is it doing? How does it work? Now we have some ideas and we certainly have parts we understand, but we definitely don't know how all of it really works together and makes stuff possible. The idea of memory and why we have memories is crazy for another video in the future. Furthermore, we don't even know if scanning an image of a brain and then creating a digital copy of it would accurately simulate consciousness or not. So look, there are three major assumptions required for uploading technology to even be possible, and none of these are guaranteed in any way at all. And immediately, we're going to dive right into the metaphysical with the assumption of physicalism. This assumption is that everything about the mind and human consciousness, essentially all mental phenomena, are just physical phenomena. For a lot of people, making this assumption is a pretty big ask, as one of the main arguments against physicalism involves knowledge and human consciousness. Look, we're not here today to argue either side of that debate. It's complicated and I don't want to. But for the purposes of uploading a mind to be possible, we do have to assume that it's true and an authentic recreation of a brain would result in an authentic recreation of that person's consciousness in a digital form. If the reality is that physicalism is wrong and these scientists instead find themselves following the path of full metal alchemist and inadvertently created wretched homunculi that are the embodiment of the seven deadly sins, well, that certainly would be an interesting plot twist, but it would render the rest of our discussion moot. So uh, we're not going to go there, and no one likes homunculi. The second assumption we need to make is that it will be possible to accurately scan a human brain to the level of detail required to actually recreate it in digital form. And we do actually have this technology in a manner of speaking, sort of, not really, but yeah. Our best current non-invasive technology, MRIs, are extremely effective. However, they fall roughly a thousand times short of the level of detail needed. If we were simply to amp up the power of an MRI machine to try and get the necessary detail, the person being scanned, well, their brain would literally be cooked. This means either we need to invent new technology for this purpose, or people can only be scanned after they're dead. When cooking your brain, doesn't matter. Good. Look, since death is a small and worthwhile price 
for digital immortality, there is an option we currently have access to. A brain can be cut into thousands of really thin slices and then scanned with an electronic microscope. This has already been done on a mouse brain, or at least part of a mouse brain, specifically a one millimeter cube of mouse brain. Like I said, we're not really there with the technology yet. That cube was then cut into 25,000 slices and scanned by an electron microscope. The process resulted in 100 million pictures being taken over the course of five months. For a tiny little bit of mouse brain. Another three months were then required to assemble the images into a 3D model of that section of the brain. The result was a 2 petabyte, that's 2,000 terabytes by the way, that's a lot if you're not a computer person, chunk of information. This section of the brain that was scanned was roughly one millionth the size of a full human brain, which tells us, well, two things. The first is that, unless our methods for doing this dramatically improve, only the absolutely most important, which is to say richest people, will ever have access to uploading their minds. So start working harder today. Capitalism is the future. The process is super time consuming and requires data storage. Like all our data storage, and just to give you an idea of how much storage that would be, it would take 2 million petabytes, which is, uh, for reference, about a thousand times the total amount of data that is currently stored on the whole cloud. These are massive numbers. So just to give you some concept of scale, remember that the cloud isn't just for uploading photos of your life. Arte Fomart. Over 60% of the corporate data in the world is stored on the cloud. And that's not a lot of pictures of latte foam art. The second thing we can learn from this experiment is that these scaled up numbers are a sign that perhaps we should not be playing God, as the time to scan and 3D model a human brain ramped up from that mouse little sample would be 666,666,000.66 years. Coincidence? Yes. It's entirely a coincidence. God isn't sending us a message. I hope. And now. The third assumption comes into play, and that's that once we've made that model, scientists can actually do something with it. Our brains, they're not static things. Every second, about 100 billion neurons each fire 5 to 50 times. The computer code required to animate such a complex thing would be unbelievably complicated, and we still don't know enough about how the brain actually works to even begin to start work on such a program. That's not to say it's impossible, which is not even anywhere close yet. Technological estimates and hurdles. Now, there are all sorts of estimates about how close we are to being able to upload human consciousness. Go back far enough and you'll find estimates this would be possible in 2019. Ugh, past people, you're too lazy. Come on. But clearly, that wasn't the case. Currently, the most optimistic estimates aim for around 2045, but that just doesn't seem very likely at all. That's really close in the future and we're not there. We're not there. We're not there, guys. I'm sorry. Of all the potential issues with trying to turn digital consciousness into a reality, the technological constraints are likely to be the first to overcome. Computers will continue to get more powerful and our ability to store data will increase. It's also possible that we will find a way to simplify the data of our brain so that it takes up less space. However, it's important to remember that every single step of the process must be checked and rechecked and recheck to make sure that it was done perfectly or you're going to end up with a broken person. An incorrect or incomplete image could result in anything from memory loss to full-blown psychosis. For eternity! <laughs> Even if the processes are all implemented with the utmost of care, there's still the risk of data corruption. And Scandisk ain't gonna fix that shit. With something as complicated and intricate as the human brain, who knows what effect an even a single bit flip would cause from a cosmic ray. Still, even with the technology catching up to where we need it, there are still countless other technical problems. We don't know enough about how the mind works to animate a perfectly rendered 3D model of one. Even on the assumption of physicalism, there are still factors beside the physical makeup of our brain that matter. Various hormones affect the brain, as do external factors like blue light. Are there factors we are unaware of or unable to account for that will cause the stimulated brain to just not function as expected? The answer to that is yeah, almost certainly, and it's probably going to break the first few people who try it. So, uh, well, those rich people are fucked. But then, now they use, probably use poor people. That's risky, but maybe worth it. And if the brain does function properly, for how long will it function? Will the digital brain still suffer from decreased performance without sleep? And without the physical body, will it be capable of resting and dreaming of electric sheep? And where will these uploaded minds live anyway? If the mind exists solely as a computer program left running to simulate life, but not in any virtual world, the lack of stimulus could result in hallucinations or a psychotic break like we described at the beginning with the terrifying Black Mirror episode. 
we could succeed in creating a virtual world where the minds can inhabit bodies and live some semblance of life, although the creation of such a realm has terrifying implications for simulation theory and the notion that we don't even exist, in which case immortality would be a rather silly goal. Philosophical and Ethical Issues So, one of the most famous lines from Jurassic Park is Dr. Ian Malcolm's comment that your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. This is clearly a situation where we find that once again to be true. The existence of this technology will absolutely have major implications on the way people live their lives. If the culmination of research required a living brain scan, it could cause people to live risk-averse lives to avoid dying before they had a chance to be uploaded, thus missing out on opportunities or any meaningful life altogether. It could also result in extremely erratic and unpredictable behavior following a scan. With the person knowing they're now immortal, they could be free to act out on their deepest, darkest desires, knowing that there is a copy of themselves that will live on and have no guilt or even any memory of what they did. <laughs> so scary to think of. If the copy is also conscious, as would be the entire point of uploading, would it be just to punish them for the crimes of their original host? Would they actually be their original host? Conversely, if the scans were all performed posthumously, it could have an even larger impact on how people live their lives. Risky behaviors, even those with a high probability of death, could become much more attractive. As long as someone was caught up on their upload insurance payment, something that almost certainly would exist, they could gamble recklessly, overindulge in narcotics, or even play daily games of Russian roulette with no fear of consequences as physical death would only be temporary and meaningless anyway, although I imagine the gunshot to the head would probably be a bit of a problem for the older. <laughs> scan disk. Uh, uh. System error. And then there are the effects immortality will have on the mind and the personality. Seeing as biological immortality doesn't exist, we simply have no idea what they would be. Freed from the physical world and doomed to an eternity of existence, it's pretty possible that every uploaded person would eventually become a nihilistic sociopath, or we could all become brilliant scholars who work together to solve all of humanity's problems. There's just no way to know what would happen. But it is exciting, isn't it? And this doesn't even take into account those who are already truly evil and the unforeseen horrors they could unleash on the world given infinite time to think about their evil master plans. Assuming the uploaded minds have the ability to interact and communicate with the physical world, dictators for life or supposedly godlike immortal cult leaders would become far more dangerous. So exactly how close are we to this uploading technology? Well, in short, really 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 far away in fact we are so far from this being possible that we don't really know what the steps are to even get there how we don't even know if all three of our necessary assumptions are true or not while some advocates say we could see this in our lifetime the far more likely answer is that it'll be hundreds of years in the future if ever and that might be for the best anyway Science fiction loves to portray an uploaded reality as a hedonistic paradise where everyone can experience total bliss and live out their wildest dreams, but but do you really think you'd be happy with an eternity of cocaine and casual sex? That'd probably be fun for one or two centuries, tops, but eventually it'd be about as thrilling as a lifetime of nothing but playing Pong. So look, sorry to be the bearer of bad news if you clicked on this video hoping that you're going to find out it's going to be in 10 years. It's not, you'll probably be dead. And the really scary thing is that you'll probably be one of the last people to die because this will be invented. And then in the future, everyone will live forever and we'll be the last people who died. Which is kind of weird to think about, isn't it? Thanks for watching.